Looky here folks, I'm here at BMW UK and look what we've got. The 2020 S1000XR. Let's have some fun. Oh. Down in the right then folks, here we go. Let us see what this is like. Oh, I tell you, feels quite snug sitting on it. It's got quite a sculpted seat. You know, it's got um, quite prominent padding around the back there to hold on to you. Apparently that's because of the, the pull and the drive of this bike. So let's see, ergonomic wise, pegs feel nice height actually, not too high, not too low, a little bit higher than the GS, but nothing massive. Uh, bars, bars feel good actually. Bars feel nice, everything feels familiar. If you've ridden a GS, then you'll be familiar with all the controls on this. Pretty much exactly the same. So, push button, keyless as well. They actually, there's a little cubby hole on these new ones, a bit like the GS Adventures. I wish the standard GS had this actually. If you want, you can keep your keys there as long as you remember to take them out. But what does she sound like? Oh, little bit throaty. Nice looking standard exhaust, I think it's probably identical to the one that's on the S1000RR, looks the same, nice, very nice Doit, Doit inline 4 engine, so, how many uh, mirrors, mirrors are looking okay, just a standard mirror, same ones you get on the GS, same ones you get on the um, RR, I think that is us, so, let's head off, way, that's a good start isn't it, I tell you, it's not as much, um, it's not as much pull, as I was expecting there to be straight off the off. Oh, I should have gone down there. Never mind. We'll go back around again. Yeah, that doesn't feel there's certainly not as much drive straight away as there is with the S1000RR or even the GS. You have to turn the throttle a little bit more. This thing has 165 brake horsepower but 116 newton meters of torque handles nice though quick shifters beautiful so blipper like yeah, blipper feels good as well. It's nice that, it's more refined than I was expecting. I was expecting a little bit of an animal, but it's not at all. Typical BMW, very refined. So in the 30s, what's it like? Well, I've just come through on the outskirts of the town. So sitting at 30 mile an hour, third gear, it's too low, I want to go up into fourth. So, 30 mile an hour, fourth gear, feels about the right gear, it's happy just to coast along. Fueling feels lovely. No lurching, nothing like that. These brakes feel good as well. They don't grab. Now these are BMW's own. Again, like the GS, they used to be Brembo's. Now BMW seem to have gone to their own brand. They use them on the GS. I never have an issue with the brakes on the Beamers. Funnily enough, I've only ever tracked the GS. I've never tracked, you know, any other BMW bike. But with the GS, it's a big, heavy bike. And you're pushing that outside of its comfort zone. And I've never felt the brakes sort of fade or, or anything like that. So there's no reason to expect them to do that on this. Seating position actually feels really quite nice. I almost feel more prominent than on the tractor, to be honest. I don't know why that is. You're sort of pushed, well I am, with my girth, but I'm pushed into the tank, and I like that. It's a very nice, locked in, secure feeling, especially with the sculpted sort of seat and panels at the back here. With my big fat ass, it, I really do feel like I'm being held nice and secure on the bike. I had a wee bit of fun out in the country before we came into the town here, and um, Again, the bike's not as quick, or it doesn't feel as quick as I was expecting to. Everyone's been telling me that this thing is just an utter rocket. But 
you you have to wind it up you know I, the throttle pinned a few times from sort of like 20 miles an hour you're pinning it and there's not a great deal happening until you get the revs up there typical inline four really to be honest but i was expecting a wee bit more pull than this has from the off it's not slow by any stretch of the imagination handles beautifully just lovely you feel oh it's a 50 you feel like you can lay this thing on its ear Feel very at home on this bike straight away. Nationals! See, that was third gear pinned, and although it, it goes, it wasn't the sort of boom havoc that I was expecting. It's not slow, don't get me wrong, folks. This is not a slow bike, it's just not that great wall of power. Like the S1000RR my god that lets you know you're accelerating but it does it in a refined manner it's so weird this does it maybe but it's maybe it's just too refined for me i don't know maybe i have to drop it to second and not third i'll try that as well we'll see oh 30 miles an hour on a dual carriageway and more cones the uk loves to do roadworks. Look at all the crap at the side. Disgusting. Mong. Utter mong. Anyway, the UK love to do roadworks. And my God, with lockdown or the apparent lockdown, whatever the hell we're in at the moment, let's not get topical. Ooh, fishing. Um, they are certainly spending their budgets for next year. I mean, it's just roadworks everywhere. And nobody here. No one. Can't see any workers anywhere. But the cones are here. Anyway, I'll see you when we get off of this. You know what I was saying about maybe I need to drop it to second? Drop it to second. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> into a 30 the second i put the cameras on 30 mile an hour limits oh. right let's get out of here into the nationals nationals right into second just under 4,000 revs listen to this oh. the front the front just wants the lift now i'm not going to go crazy here because there's still still a residential area all those nationals still lots of options those brakes are beautiful the handling is beautiful razor sharp very settled now is this semi-active suspension i think it is definitely where I would normally be in third, knocking it down into second. In line four, isn't it? Typical in line four. But second and third are your playtime gears. That blipper. Gorgeous. Just taking it a little bit easy, folks, because with all this crud on the road, you do get some gravel and mud and everything washed out. And this isn't my bike. That's lovely. Oh, this is so much better than what I remember the previous incarnation to be. I rode one about three years ago and I just wasn't taken with it. Already, I'm really enjoying this. And into a 30. Okay. Oh, 
first to second using a quick shifter and it's like butter wow so far very impressed right let's get out onto the country twisties and have a chat so folks we're on 50 mile an hour stretch of road a little bit bumpy in places but it's got some nice progressive curves what's the bike like well i'm sat in fourth gear but it feels like it wants to be in fifth fifth feels like it's sort of happy place but fourth is more responsive dropping it to third there's loads of drive there loads if you're coming from like a twin a triple anything like that you know anything outside of an inline four drop it down a gear at least one if not two when you want to play the ride feels firm but not spine snappingly firm it's not bad at all actually i never feel like in the bends it's not felt yet like especially the front where the front is sort of bumping along the ground it always feels reassuringly in touch with the road surface it's not overly firm the rear feels lovely so far my bum has started to I wouldn't say get sore, but I'm aware that I've been sat in the saddle. But I've been in the bike for about 40 minutes now, I would say, 45 minutes. National! Okay, out on some nationals, but bumpy backcountry twisty ones. Again, the ride feels fine. It's on the sporty side of firm, or on the firm side of sporty, whichever one you want. But it's nice that engine note off of this stock can is lovely certainly in second gear third gear high revs oh it sounds good the seating position it's lovely it feels very familiar quite high up like on a big adventure bike yet also funnily enough a little bit sporty which is exactly what the xr is it's supposed to be that crossover that hybrid between your sports bikes and your adventure bikes for those who aren't quite ready to let go <laughs> oh. slow in case there's horses i'm liking this do you know sometimes in the comments i know i shouldn't read the comments but i like to know what you folks are thinking and it's nice to you know to have a little bit of an interaction that's part of the reason i got into all this but sometimes like someone left a comment the other day and we're just like i like your videos but i'm sort of sick and tired of all you vloggers gushing over all these new bikes it would be nice to hear a negative review once in a while and i'm like what do you expect us to do like specifically give a bike a negative review even if we like it the problem that it's not even a problem but the situation we're in today folks is that most of the new bikes that come out I can't remember the last time I rode a genuinely bad bike there's always bits that I like better than others and bikes that I like better than others but as far as a bad bike goes at this precise moment in time I can't think of one but that said I will give you the bits I don't like about a bike but generally in fact almost always there's more positive than there is negative these days so in the interest of being fair which i always try to be let's think of a negative it's not a gs no uh right a negative negative well so far i've only done 33 miles so for me that's not even a test yet but this is a first ride my initial reactions at this precise moment the only thing i don't hmm, it's not that i don't like the only thing that's made me go hmm i wasn't expecting that it's not as good as i thought it would be is the initial pull from the bike you do have to get it's about four thousand and up that's when the, the sort of real power kicks in and that's to be expected in an inline four that's generally what inline fours are like it's normally seven eight nine thousand revs boom there's the power so there's certainly more power available lower down but it still feels a little bit sort of meh from initial pull off so to speak and nobody likes a feeling of hmm, 
in the initial pull-off, do we, boys and girls? Well, that sounds weird. So, back onto some nationals, country twisties. And listen to this engine in second. Just traffic absolutely everywhere down here. Uh. Off camera, I was doing a little bit of uh, testing, and you know what I was saying about 4,000 revs? That's really where you start to feel the pull. Well, that's nothing. That is nothing. Get this thing up to about 7,000 and above. And yet, like a typical inline four, that is where Satan lives. Above 7,000 revs, this thing is a hooligan. But it's impossible to show you that on, on normal roads. Because above that, you know, at 7,000 revs and more, you're going way above even the national speed limit. So I can't show you that. I mean, it's... It's a little bit frustrating. I should get this on a track, but I can't afford to, to do that. So you'll have to do with these roads. But um, it is frustrating because at road speeds, most bikes are a bit of a muchness, to be honest with you. They just, they, they might make you feel a little bit better. The bigger bikes, like not your inline fours, but your twins and your triples, your V4s, all that sort of stuff, V-twins. They've all got loads of grunt low down, so you can have a bit of fun with them. But I find with inline fours, you can't really have fun where you really see what the engine can do at road speeds, at road legal speeds. And obviously I've already been booted in the arse once, and I don't fancy that happening again, seeing as this is now my living. So I have to tow the party line. But take it from me, oh my god. I understand what you're all saying now. All you XR owners, when you were contacting and messaging me, I understand. Whew, this thing is like a ballistic missile. Sort of eight nine thousand revs. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Oh my god! This thing is a weapon. Wow. If it had that sort of pull, low down this would be an incredible bike it's just too labored low down for me i like that instantaneous grunt you get off of your twins and triples v4s this isn't a slouch don't get me wrong but it's just not got that initial punch but wow it more than makes up for it once you get the revs up Ooh. That blipper and quick shifter is gorgeous. It's got self cancelling indicators, this as well. Lovely job. It's basically, it's got all the bells and whistles that you'd expect from a BMW. Exactly the same as the GS, the S1000RR, all the same kits, cruise control, heated grips. This one comes with rain, road, and dynamic modes what it does is that if you then have a pillion on the back so the weight or you put some luggage on and weight of the bike increases then the suspension will automatically stiffen up to compensate for that 
sort of increased load on the bike and then conversely if you then go from a road like this onto a dirt track the suspension automatically softens to compensate for the bumpier road surface it is a really really clever system to the extent where you can actually feel when I've taken Mrs Teapot you have to do it when you're stationary and when Mrs Teapot gets on the back or, or any pillion gets on the back you can feel the bike rise up and then when they get off initially when you're first sat there you think oh god I'm, I'm up in the heavens here I'm really high up because the suspension sort of firmed itself right up and then as soon as you start moving the bike just sort of compensates for that and then just softens all out again it's lovely really is good Mrs Teapot's gonna love that analogy this is a, a great bit of road coming up it's got a couple of flip-flops in it it's a nice way to see what the the balance of the bike is like you know and how how easy is it to flip from one direction to another Those brakes are beautiful, really are good. Once you learn where the power band is in this, where the pickup point is, and you learn just to hover around that in your gearing and your throttle, if that's what you want from the engine, then the power's there. You can find that power almost instantly. Nationals! It's not the same drive that you get out of uh, you know, the twins and triples initially. But once you wind it up, it's about eight, nine thousand revs. Oh, what an animal! Feels really good in the turn. This really good. That is a bumpy road. And this suspension, soaking it up, feels good. Now I'm purposely dropping this down a gear, but I'm sitting in third at the moment. A, because it sounds great, but B, it means I've got that throttle response. So rather than being in fourth or fifth, where it would be quite laboured if I needed to accelerate for any reason, just by keeping it in third, You're not far away from that beautiful acceleration this engine can give you. Or if you drop it to second. Oh, that feels so good in these little flowing bends. I do like this bike. Right, I think it's time we went and have a chat. So folks, that's it, the end of the first ride review. I've done about 100 miles on the S1000XR so far. And what am I thinking? Well, I've surprised myself here. I genuinely like this bike. It is a lot of fun. My only criticism, the only criticism I can find so far is there's hardly anything below about 4,000 revs but it's an inline four engine so even at 4,000 that's not doing too bad however push it up beyond 4,000 from like certainly seven or eight thousand up oh my good god there is an utter utter maniac up there which is so much fun bugger all use for the roads but so much fun um the bike is comfortable, the ergonomics are great, it's familiar. If you've ridden any modern BMW, you'll be fine on this. All the switch gears are exactly the same, the modes are all the same. It 
rides beautifully, the semi-active suspension that it has is great, it adapts to any type of road that I've been on. Not being off-road, obviously, but any of the back B road scratchers that you get in the UK, right up to main uh, sort of dual carriageway A roads. I've not taken it on the motorway as yet, I'll save that for the main big review that I'll be doing. But all in, loving it. Starts at 14,200 and something pounds and goes up from there. Uh, wow, I am, I'm pretty damn impressed with this. I wasn't expecting to like the XR, not after, you know, I tried one about three or four years ago and I, I just didn't get on. This to me feels like a totally different bike. I, I, I love it, I genuinely love it. Um, negatives, only negative is the, the low down uh, pull factor for me and that's that's inherent of an inline four engine really so um can't criticize that loved it i will be spending the night i've got this for a week so i'm going to be spending uh, the rest of this week spanking this bike seeing what it's like and then i'm going on a little bit of a trip uh, towards the end of the week before i give it back and that is when i will film the final full review but as far as an initial ride review goes, this is it, folks. Hope you've enjoyed it. For any of you that are left, massive thank you to all you regular subscribers. If you're new to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to ding dong the bell. If you're in the clan over on Patreon, thank you so much for your ongoing support. I keep telling you folks this, but I, I couldn't do this without you. So I really do appreciate you folks going the extra mile and supporting over there. If you've not checked it out yet and you think it might be something you fancy, you get early access to the vids. We do do some meetups and ride outs, but obviously at the moment things are a little bit difficult. Um, I'm going to be doing some uh, live vids as well soon, purely just for those over on the clan. I'm just trying to figure all that out as we speak. Uh, and there's going to be some new clan only merchandise coming out and lots of other bits and bobs so head on over to patreon.com forward slash teapot one if you think that might interest you i am now offering some sponsorship places over on the podcast the brew time podcast and um, i've got room on the channel now for the main youtube sponsorship as well so if you or your company or your product are interested drop me a line info at teapot1.com and lastly Lastly, because if you've hung around here, then you really are a fan of the channel. Merchandise, there's a whole new line of merchandise just being released and there's more to come. So head on over to teapot1.com and check that out. Right, folks, that's the bag and bowl all done and dusted. I hate doing that, but it, it literally puts fuel in the tank. So thank you very much for all your support. Hope you've enjoyed it. Look after yourselves. Look after those that you love. Get on out there. But most importantly, most importantly. Live your life. Hooah!